Thank you for our fourth uh, tuning into the uh, Volk Report fourth installment, fourth edition here of our ongoing documentary, where we are discussing that there is no financial collapse because the financial collapse has already happened. Picking up where we left off in the prior video, we we're talking about the uh, 2008 financial crisis, uh, the mortgage uh, situation. And I wanted to point out just a few a few notes here. The first one being that during the time of that uh, that 2006 2007 time period, and really going back before then, I'll say from 2003 up until like 2007, um, I had developed an uh, an algorithm that would time the bond market so that we knew for our clients when the lock-in rates interest rates um, during these time periods as well um, I had worked with many other organizations and banks and stuff and I remember um, passing this uh, around this information around to one of the banks where I was uh, working at and um, I thought it was it was pretty it was <laughs> how, do, how do I say this it was it was downright hilarious um, how people in, in the beginning didn't didn't trust it and then when I said okay you need to lock in your rates and every day I, I forget the actual time period I think it was between like two and two thirty it was something about the actual time I don't remember it was so long ago but I don't remember all the features but I know that. Uh, I could tell what time of the day to lock in, and there was a certain time, something about the afternoon, and I don't remember all the, all the ins and outs and stuff about it. But at the time, it worked. It worked like clockwork. We knew when to let a rate float and when to lock it in, and it was it was awesome. And it actually uh, helped us in pricing deals and stuff, and closing deals. And other people used it and found it helpful as well. Um, so that was one of my claim to fame as far as systems uh, developed. Uh, in the markets to to do things that was one of one of my most favorite ones uh, one of my earlier systems though was the um, the soybean system and that system was crazy it pretty much never lost it made you a cent and a, and a quarter to a cent and a half a day and that was pretty much without fail and you know it was it was awesome and and I, and I liked it. it was my earlier earlier you know projects and then there was that project actually spilled over into uh, discovering a new mechanism and this one was specifically in raiding cotton uh, I systematically and single-handedly used to raid the cotton market how did I do that there was a specific algorithm that I developed that would predict the next day's highs and lows exactly and so what I would do is I would place my orders my tickets would be in always before you know the market opens and I would routinely on multiple occasions with eyewitnesses back when I was on that uh, on that trading floor the firm I was at and I would buy the low of the day and sell the high of the day and sometimes sell the high of the day and buy the low of the day so if it was a shorting trade I would be my, my I would be filled at the, at the very high and then get out at the low and take profit I did this three times I did it three times after the third time I was no longer able to do it <laughs> because they caught wind of me and what I was doing and they and they started uh, they started egging me big time they dissed me they would hold my tickets and not fill my tickets like they were supposed to they would wait and they would you know do funny things with uh, with my order so that I would not no longer be able to be able to do that so I, I did a little bit of digging and research and found out, you know, you know what was what, and they said, well, you know, 
our firm, you know, the firm I was at, it was like, you know, we have an account number. So they know when that when when that account number comes over and they see, you know, the tickets for the the cotton futures, they know it's you, they know where it's coming from. So that's that's how you're getting egged. Uh, another thing too that would happen routinely is that um, my um, the the meat market, you know, live cattle, feeder cattle, they were notorious back then for walking home, going home with tickets in their in their pockets, literally tickets in their pockets, tickets dangling out of their pockets, not you know closing out orders letting it ride for a day or two sometimes you know days go by and you get a, a reprice on things you were already filled in they reprice you sometimes it would even be in your favor it was hilarious just the way business was able to be conducted and at, at, during this time too uh, the crude oil market was the most gangster in the world you're gonna see that coming up here shortly I digressed for a moment. I, I, I sidestepped from it because I want to. This is this laying the foundation for what we're going to be talking about next. We're going to be talking about the systems, the 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 systems, the old paradigm and the new paradigm, the systems that are in place. Basically, my my point going forward is that. Machines have now replaced humans and have taken over everything, including the stock market. And it started here, 9-11. This is the chart, 9-11. This is the S&P 500, 9-11 chart. All right. When they closed the market on 9-11 and reopened it, what they did was they relocated the software. All right. They relocated it from physical Wall Street to like New Jersey and other places around to keep the markets going all right and it was all done electronically okay so this was like the perfect scenario to roll out the new electronic mechanism anyway 9-11 gave it that perfect excuse to do so so all the orders and stuff were, were all the trading was being done through new jersey and other parts it wasn't being done on wall street now during this time too this during this 9-11 period you need to understand what was starting to take place anyway right at the end of 2000 at the end of 2000 leading up to around i want to say 2004 about 2004, 2005, somewhere around there. What happened was the new electronic system that they put in place started to phase out physical bodies. You, that's when you start seeing the layoffs and stuff come on Wall Street. They start laying off um, Wall Street. They start rolling up industries during this time. No industry went untouched. As a result of, I think it was, I'm going back here, and I'm going back to the 80s now. I think it was that Pan Am flight. I forget which one it was. The Lockerbie, Scotland one, one of those. This is way back in the day. Um, at, right after that is where you had airline reform. Okay? That was that was the airlines 9-11, before 9-11. All right? That, it caused that industry to be rolled up and totally redone and put under government control every time there is a major event it gives the excuse to roll everything up under government scrutiny there have been industries that had no government oversight excuse me in regulation now it has government oversight in, in regulation or another word for saying government control of that industry the government has taken control of pretty much every industry known to man right now the government is in control of it they put into place back here during 9-11 this is where a lot of things happen and that you see now got its birth from 9-11 i.e. the Patriot Act the Patriot Act replaced the US Constitution the Constitution got suspended we haven't been operating under the US Constitution since 9-11 We've been under the Patriot Act, okay? Uh, the Department of Homeland Security also did not exist. It came after this, all right? Uh, multiple government agencies got rolled up 
into the Department of Homeland Security. Even prior to that, when you started having the government shutdown scenarios in the late 1990s, uh, a lot of um, department agencies that were existed back then, they got rid of also. And and in the process of doing that, they um, instead of just like firing and laying off people, they gave they offered you know tens of thousands of people opportunities to take these um, these incredible buyouts and to retire early. So they they retire a lot of people, and then other people were able to get positions going somewhere else. So it was a smooth transition for a lot of people. So the late '90s, early 2000s was. I want to say that the period, the decade of the roll-up, where you start having small companies got got eaten up by larger entities, and you start having industries starting to die out and go away, and new ones come in, and some took their place, and then others had nothing to take their place. So the airline industry got reformed, and now um, Wall Street was going to see its reformation also. So the stockbroker, as as you know it, is is a dead dinosaur. Doesn't exist anymore. You got financial planners and other things like that, but no one's trading anymore. A lot of um, banks and uh, Wall Street firms uh, closed down their trading desks. A lot of things were happening during this period that you need to know. This is also the time where they started um, introducing the single stock futures. That's right, futures contracts on individual stocks. It never really gained ground and really took off, though. But yes, they did introduce uh, futures contracts on individual stocks. It was also during this time right here that they uh, tossed around an idea to create a futures contract for finding Osama bin Laden. I kid you not, it was real. They were talking about doing it. Then the Pentagon Department of Defense got involved and said, you know what, on second thought, that's not a good idea. Let's not do that. Why did they, were they thinking about doing that? Because they know that traders are the most intelligent people on the planet. I don't mean because they have high IQs. I mean because they have access to information that the general public doesn't have access to. And they knew that if they put it out there and made a contract out of it, that people would find out a way and an edge in that market by finding Osama bin Laden and telling them where he's at. That's why it never took off. If you were really trying to find him and they really couldn't find him, that would have been a, a, a great way to go to find him, right? But they canceled it. Wanna know why? Because they weren't interested in finding them. Everything you've been seeing and told has been for the public's benefit, and it's been a lie. We have not operated under the Constitution since 9/11. Hence, you've been seeing more lawlessness since then. You've been seeing all types of things: uh, pol uh, police violence and brutality or against American citizens. I mean, the list goes on. I, I, this is not the purpose of the video. I'm just pointing out some things to you. Um, in addition to that, you're seeing now the rise of technology in electronics. Okay, The market has been replaced with electronics. Trading floors are pretty much ghost towns. They're empty. Back in the heyday, you could have a 1,000 people or more on a trading floor. You're lucky now if you got 20. Everyone now has gone off floor. Machines have taken over. Uh, not long after this 9-11 period, too, this is more so like in 2002, 2003, the New York Stock Exchange, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, uh, you know, they started looking for experienced programmers, and they wanted them to work on some classified stuff because they wanted them they were putting together the infrastructure for the new system now back here doing these days too we had um, we had curbs and, and circuit breakers in the market also to prevent the markets from getting out of whack so that, you know this would slow things down a little bit and I'm here to tell you that we haven't been using circuit breakers since back in here as a matter of fact, the last documented time we used a circuit breaker was just prior to the 2008 crash. It was 2007, I believe it was. Let's move on. Next chart you're going to be looking at here. Uh, let's see here. This is the... Hold on. 
go back for a minute. I'm going to I'm going to fast forward cuz there's something I want you to see real quick while I'm thinking about it. Okay. This here is a, a chart of the crude oil futures market depth. I want to prove to you that computers have taken over the market. Okay? Human beings are still in there, but the reason why you see microscopic volume like this is because, and drum roll please, there's no human beings in their planet. Okay, one thing that I want to note here is the way that you can tell that the computer algorithms have taken over and human beings are involved. It's really simple. Here you see it's 37 on this side and 37 on the other side. Here you see even 24 on this side, 24 on that side. That's computer algorithms. That is the machines taking advantage and controlling the environment because there's no one else there. Okay? That's the only way that you'll be able to tell just by looking at it. But what I'm declaring to you today is the thing that keeps the markets going up and down is the machines. They've turned the financial markets into a living, breathing organism, electronic organism. It's all machines and computer generated and driven. That's why you see huge crashes, rallies, whatever, on invisible volume, thin to no volume at all, and you can have huge moves, elongated candles, parabolic moves in the markets up and down. Um, I don't have the chart. I wish I did. I couldn't find it. But uh, there was one day, one holiday, when the Dow moved 1,200 points up on the day with no volume. It was a holiday. Um, that is impossible and not supposed to be able to happen. All right, so then the next question you'll have is, okay, well, then how are they um, doing it? Well, it's very simple. When, if you notice, correlations in markets were commonplace and non-correlations, meaning that if uh, the Dow was going to be up today, then you would um, you would be long the Dow and Dow stocks, and you would be selling bonds and, you know, the, the, the opposite. Then the opposite will hold true. If, if the Dow was down a couple hundred points, then bonds would be, you know, through the roof. <coughs> Excuse me. Those correlations over the years have broken down because the machines have taken over. It's algorithms. There was a time, too, where they would use um, curbs in the market and circuit breakers. They don't use those anymore because they don't have any need for them. You don't need circuit breakers when the computer is controlling the order flows in the market and preventing crashes and things like that from happening. You can have pullbacks or significant moves, but you're not going to have the quote-unquote crash because it's being controlled by computers. That's why when you see the situation like the, um, the May 6, uh, uh, 2010, flash crash the market was brought back immediately it was immediately brought back up how were they able to do that think about it like this the dollar has become the Borg the dollar has become hive mind alright you can't even get 20 senators in a room to agree on anything look at our Congress look look at things Look at Capitol Hill they can't agree on anything okay except for things that they're supposed to and need to agree on behind closed doors of course same thing with the market if for whatever reason people believe the Dow should be down for the day the plunge protection team in the past will come in and prop the market up you don't need to have a plunge protection team anymore because you have computers now all the computers are, is a centralized nervous system that runs all of this and the key to the controls of this is at the Federal Reserve. That's why no one's allowed to go into the Federal Reserve. No cameras are allowed in the Federal Reserve. It's a no man's land. So you're not allowed to go in there because they don't want you to see that everything is a big giant computer. Back in the uh, mid to late 90s, a uh, computer system over in Europe was created called the Beast. This thing was like a mile long. <laughs> 
all right and it can hold all the data for every human being plus some on the planet this was back in the mid to late 90s so this system is now in full place that's why you have market manipulation like you see it and it's really not manipulation it's the computers the algorithms resetting themselves and holding the markets together all right and so when we come back in our next video series we're going to look further into this and see the computers at work and see how they balance themselves out and see how they've spilled over into not just Wall Street but the banking system and other systems and you're about to see that in the next video um, as time permits I'm trying to get all the information I can together to really lay this out for you but I'll just preface it to say this um, you're gonna see also how um, the ca cash only still exists on a limited basis just for the public's benefit they knew they could not reveal all this stuff to the, the masses at one time without creating a panic but it's already here we already have the one world currency we already have all of that the one world currency is not rubles it's not francs it's not the dollar it's not gold and it's not silver it's an electronic database it's an electronic mechanism everything is electronic that's why they, they charge you a premium for converting electronic digits into paper currency when you go to a bank and say I would like to um, cash this check there is a fee associated with doing so especially if you don't have an account there at that bank ATMs charge you a fee automatically for converting digital currencies on the screen into paper asset into paper uh, vouchers if you will that's all a dollar is it's a receipt it's a little voucher it's a little coupon so it, it, it costs money now to convert digits into paper currency all right and we're gonna continue this in the next video thanks for uh, tracking with me and uh, thank you for your patience and uh, we're gonna keep it keep it moving